Hi friends, hi yogis. Welcome to our practice. I have my dogs and got David here today. It's a very stormy and cloudy day here in Southwest Michigan. I'm hoping that we're not going to lose you. If we do, we'll connect back in again, hopefully. Let's see if we can find a comfy place to begin. I thought I'd concentrate today on pelvis and hamstrings, see if we can soften up our legs a bit and find some mobility in our hips and in our pelvis. So set your intention as well and see if we can have a beautiful practice. Find yourself sitting on the edge of a blanket maybe, on a block, something to take your pelvis a little higher than your knees. If you find that you're seated and your low back is rounding and your chest just caving in, a clear indication to sit up on something a bit higher. See if you can feel your pelvis tilted forward, anterior cant, slightly forward of the sit bones. Release the musculature in your hips, allow your legs to release to the ground. We find our anchor, our purpose, our place, our grounding. Maybe this morning, feel the energy moving from your hips, down your thighs, out your knees, directed towards the floor. Feel the arch in the low back, the natural curve. We're going to be talking about that natural curve all practice today. So see if you can maybe take your hand into the small of your back and see that there's a little bit of an arch. Not overdone, but certainly not a flattened position. Take your hands to the bottom of the rib cage, draw those low ribs in. We interlace our fingers and find Uddiyana Bandha, our thoracic bind. It's transversus abdominis is the muscle that holds this very mobile segment around the bottom of the rib cage stable so that you can bring your chest nice and tall. What opens is the upper back. Perhaps you can feel the head slides back into its bobble-headed or more of an unweighted position. Let's take our hands back behind us, open up, presentation arms. Maybe feel the energy from your shoulders right down through your hands, out your fingertips, maybe a little buzzing. Release the elbows now down towards the hips, soften the shoulders, palms up, for receptivity, palms down for more of a grounding. Broadening our collarbones. Close your eyes. See if you can envision the back of your skull aligned with your sacrum, that triangle bone wedged between the two pelvic bones, our sacred holy bone. Maybe the earlobes right above the shoulder tips. Maybe you can perceive here how the muscles have started to shut down. We rest on our bones on the curves in our spine much more than the activity of our musculature. Take a moment here, scan the internal structures, see what's being fed back to your brain. We know this, this is our time to check in. We start to shift our focus to our practice on our breath and away from all the other chatter and noise of the universe. See what's being fed back. Not necessarily looking to change anything more just observational. Where are we beginning? Where's the start of our journey today? How about inviting your breath now? Reminding you yet again, this is our invitational breath. It's our yogic breath. It truly is the thread through our practice. Let's weave it through. I suggest you inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth, through pursed lips. You find something that feels more organic if that doesn't feel natural. We know that inhaling through the nose will warm and hydrate and purify that welcome air, that prana, that we sip in to feed our system down to the cellular level. And as you breathe out through your pursed lips, you can hear and feel the exhaust as it leaves your body. In that exhaust, all the things we no longer need. From your mind, from your body, our physiological and mental debris. It's a cleansing. 
This is a time for you to sit for a moment, catch your breath, and let's see if maybe we can unite our breath and all of our yogis practicing around the world. Let's sit for a minute and see if you can purify the system a bit. Before you open your eyes, take your thumbs and cross them like bird wings. Place them lightly over the center of the chest, the heart chakra. It's our compassion center. It's our humanness. Feel your heartbeat inside your chest. Feel the warmth on the outside of the body in your palms. Stopping for a moment to feel that humanness. Blink your eyes open, look at the front of your mat, bring the gaze back up, let's offer it up. Take your arms up, feel those fingertips, touch the ceiling right through the roof of the house, up to the sky, the clouds and beyond. The sit bones, the opposite, like a weight maybe or a tether, grounding you deep down. We can feel these two opposing forces and somewhere in the center of the system, we find that even balance. Pull the low ribs in, look up at your hands, take the hands back behind you a little bit more, opening from your upper back, igniting the muscles in the upper back to get rid of some of the roundedness of the spine. Look at the hands as they come a little closer together, we squeeze that imaginary energy globe and then fit your ears back between your elbows Touch your palms together, interlace the fingers, and let's go into steeple hands. Index fingers touch the sky, elbows squeeze the ears, low ribs in, back bend the upper back. Little side winding from the ribs up, start to feel the release of the intercostal muscles or spare rib muscles between the ribs. Bring it back to neutral, touch the sky, touch the deep core of the earth. Press your palms together, inhale and on your exhale, slowly lower down through main central, third eye. Tip of the nose, lips, throat, under your big hearts. Thumbs on the heart, raise the heart for a moment, feel the shoulder blades release down the back and the freedom in the head and neck. Release the hands to the earth, let's open our necks. We find these tripod hands and legs, inhale, Exhale, right hand will hold the floor, let the left ear soften to the left shoulder. Fight the feeling to pull the head down, but surrender into the right side of the neck and the weight of your head, and gravity will do all the work. Inhale the head back up to center, and on the exhale, opposite left hand holds the floor, right ear towards right shoulder. Soften in. Maybe in the spine, a skeleton, all the pieces starting to release and soften. Inhale the head back up to center on the exhale, left hand turn with the chin, it stays on the horizon line. That's the advantageous position to find the rotation. Take it around, try to keep it all up in the seven vertebrae in your neck. Let's do a little shake of the head, yes, carve out some of the tissue and space, bring the head back to neutral and maybe you can take it a little bit farther. Inhale back to center, 
Exhale around to the right. Keep it on horizon line. Take it around. End of your range. Shake your head. Yes. Little small movements. Irrigating the tissue. Bring the head back to neutral. Maybe you can go a little bit farther. Beautiful. Inhale back through center and around to the left. Same thing we just did, maybe a little bit cleaner. And if you'd like to go farther with this, inhale. Exhale, right hand holds the floor. Bring the chin out towards her to the left shoulder point. Accentuating the stretch, right side of the neck. Inhale the head back up through center. Exhale around to the right. Inhale, exhale, left hand holds the floor. Chin out towards her to right shoulder point. Inhale back to the center. On the exhale, we lower the chin slowly to the jugular notch between the two collarbones. Again, try to keep it all up in the neck. Don't let the chest bow or the shoulders cave in. Inhale. On the exhale, trace your chin along the line of your right collarbone. Keep it on the collarbone for safety. If it starts to leave, that's where you stop. Maybe you can find the end of the collarbone right into the shoulder blade. Inhale it back through center and exhale left. Chin on collarbone, swivel around. Find the end of your range, pause for just a moment. Then inhale it back through center. On the exhale, rear front press of hands and sit bones. Pull the low belly in, low ribs in. Bring your heart nice and tall. The head will come up. The crown of the head goes to the sky. Inhale, and on the exhale, push the heart forward. The imaginary hand between the shoulder blades opening the upper back. And never let the head drop back, but slowly lower it. See if you can find some new spots to share the movement. Provided there's no dizziness or pain in the spine, let the head release. Beautiful. Inhale your head back up. Neutral position. Just a little forward fold. Take your hands, L-shaped hands. Thumbs press down onto the, sit onto the thighs. Hold the thighs down and then rock your pelvis forward. So again, envision your skeleton here. Sit bone starting to leave the ground. The pelvis moving over the fixed thighs. It's the same movement we do in forward fold, standing, except we've got our legs in a different position. The hamstrings are not so influential. Take your hands out in front of you now for down dog hands, index fingers forward, thumbs towards each other. Roll the marble from the index towards the thumbs. And then slowly start to pull yourself forward, press the hands into the earth, and maybe you can release the elbows to the ground onto a prop. And then use those sphinx arms here to find the length to the spine. So the goal here is not to flex to come to the ground, but to keep the spinal curves, low back arched, neck arched. And slowly start to walk the hands forward and release the heart towards the ground the length of your spine and the openness in the hips and low back. Beautiful, guys. Walk your hands back up again to the tall sit position and then cross your legs in there, uncommon cross. Take your arms up for your cactus arms, now widespread fingers. Elbows out to the side of the room. Feel that opening. Turn the thumbs backwards now. Hitchhiker shoulders, thumbs drop back. Inhale forward and exhale. Let the hands drop down. Internal rotation. See if we can make this move just from the shoulders, the ball in the socket. Up they go, thumbs back, external rotation. And forward, internal rotation. Beautiful. Back up they go, inhale, exhale, fly machine arms, they come and touch. Turn your palms to face you. Inhale, exhale, push the sides of the hands and elbows together. Isometrically, we take it up, slowly rising. When the elbows start to come apart, that's where you might stop. Pause for a moment there. Awareness of low rib sting and then pull the elbows apart. Index of middle touch and release the elbows down, side pockets. Go ahead and buzz through that a few times. Isometric press up. Slow release out, elbows into side pockets, resetting our whole shoulder girdle complex one more time and strengthening the neck musculature. Beautiful, elbows down 
And let's turn our light bulbs. Really free hands, right? Pronating, supinating those forms, moving the energies up into the queen wave hands, and up overhead, hallelujah arms. Back down again, queen wave, and into our light bulb hands. Go ahead and shake the hands out. And we'll fly them up. Bring your shoulders up to your ears, and then release them down. Let's try not to use those upper traps. Stretch your arms really long. Grab your tennis balls and start to flap your arms. Nice and easy, just pumping some energy, some blood, some synovial fluid through our shoulders here. And let's fly, touch the earth and back up. Find that elegant, graceful arms. Beautiful, we'll move into our eagle arms, right on top, left on bottom. Remember, if that doesn't work for you, you can just have them next to each other. If you can do it, have your fingers of your left hand in the palm of the right. If you can't, just stack them next to each other. Keep the tricep flesh parallel to the earth. Inhale. Exhale, drive the right elbow into the left and bring those shoulder blades forward. Protraction of shoulder blades. We're not rounding anything. We're just moving our blades on the rib cage. Inhale them back to center. And on exhale, pinch the pencil between the shoulders. Blades retract the blades and feel the mobilization of that mid thoracic spine. Beautiful. Inhale it back to neutral and on the exhale, make a right hand turn with your arms first. Stretch the posterior deltoid, rotator cuff, left side. Start to irrigate the tissues again and the joints. Turn your gaze, look over the right shoulder. Maybe you find more freedom in your neck now. Inhale the whole thing back to center and on the exhale, left hand turn with the arms. Feel the back of the right shoulder stretch. Turn the gaze over left shoulder now. Inhale it all back to center. On the exhale, drop the elbows. So don't round the spine. Take the elbows down first. The shoulder blades will start to ride up on the rib cage and then start to flex the spine. Move the left elbow towards the belly button or lower rib cage. Let the crown of the head go. Feel that movement. Beautiful, inhale back up. On the exhale, just the elbows go up. Imaginary hand behind the heart. Oh my goodness, feel that beautiful opening through the upper back. Take the elbows straight up to the sky if possible, and then maybe let the head release back. We've been doing this for a few weeks now. Maybe you can feel the difference. I know I can. Arms back to neutral. Release them back down and be as graceful as possible. Hey, take the left one on top, right, right on bottom. Customize as need be. Inhale. On the exhale, repeat just what we did. Other side, take lefty into righty, draw it forward, a slightly different stretch. Inhale it to center. Exhale, pull the blades together. Inhale to center, right hand turn with the arms first. Big stretch, back of the left shoulder. Turn your gaze over, right shoulder. Inhale back to center, arms go left. Turn the gaze left. Inhale back to center. Drop the elbows. Feel the blades start to slide, loosen up all that tissue, and then let the spine round and tuck in. Inhale back to center. Exhale, elbows only. Keep the low ribs in. Mobilizing thoracic spine, stretching our lat muscles. Possible, elbows go to the sky and the head releases back. Inhale back to neutral. Release the arms, go right into your L hands on the tops of the thighs. Same thing we did, just legs are crossed differently. Take the thumbs, press down onto the thighs. Envision yourself standing with straight legs. We're gonna be doing that shortly. Our hamstrings are lessened now because our knees are bent, so get a nice stretch of the low back muscles, the mobilization as we start to come forward, keep the chin tucked. When you feel like you're gonna fall forward, take your hands to the earth, down dog hands. Pull the palms back towards the knees, start to release the elbows to the earth if possible or to a prop. 
As soon as they touch down, pull back towards the knees, keep the arches in the back. Sit bones are off the ground and we have the longest spine ever. Irrigating the discs, moving all the fluids. Wonderful, walk your hands back up, tall position. Okay, let's come off of our buns now and open up the legs and knees and ankles after we've been sitting like that. Onto all fours, take your right foot back behind you and push your right heel to the back of the room. It feels so good to open up the calf. Heel back, crown forward, push the back of the right knee up towards the sky. Inhale the body weight forward, come onto the tips of the toes, right foot, round over onto the top of the right foot and find the plantar flexion of that ankle. Inhale. Exhale, roll back through it and feel this second time here. Now the tissue's more hydrated. And maybe you can feel the release of the whole back of the calf. Nice. Take the right leg forward, do the same thing with the left. Curl the toes under, take the heel to the back of the room, push it to the back, crown to the front, back of the knee to the heavens. Find your breath. Every time you feel the sensation, try to breathe into it and you'll see you can soften. Inhale the body weight forward, tips of the left toes onto the top of the left foot. Plant or flex the ankle. And then roll back through the toes, push the heel back over. Now take your knees wide. Inhale. And on the exhale, arch the low back. Spread the sit bones. This again is preparation for forward bend. Hang on here for a moment. Feel the release of the upper part of the hamstrings and the low back. And then let's just pull the body forward. Inhale forward. And on the exhale, release the pelvis towards the earth, the top of the cobra that we do all the time. Let's go back and forth with that. Curl the toes under, push the buns back, spread the sit bones. Feel the mobilization of your hips and your back here. And go back and forth with this a few times. Remember, your hands press the earth. Don't let the shoulders cave in. Unwind the spine. Toes curl. Push back. Spread sit bones. All this preparation for forward bending by loosening your hamstrings and pelvis. Last time, come into your top of your cobra. Nice, guys. Come on back. Take the knees wide now and push back. So we've already warmed up the system. See if you can push yourself back and let your pelvis land on the heels or take up the space with a blanket. Stretch the arms way out, down dog hands, sphinx arms. The forehead rests on the earth or a prop. Shift the pelvis right, shift the pelvis left, lubricate the hips, start to release the hamstrings as they attach up on those sit bones. Bring the pelvis back to neutral. Inhale yourself back up, quadruped position, and right into cat cow we go. Tailbone up. Come through the sacrum, the low back, the mid back, and look up. Inhale. On the exhale, keep the gaze up and start to move the pelvis back under. Spinal points, these spinous processes push up to the sky. Look back between your knees. Inhale. Exhale, gaze stays between the knees and then reverse it. Start to come back through that chain of jewels of your spine, articulating 24 different spots that actually move in the spine. Close your eyes and go through your own dance now. See if you can really connect in today, guys, and feel the spots maybe a little bit more sticky and need to have some attention. Take a moment or two and then let it dissolve into your little dance, maybe shifting hips side to side, maybe bending elbows and doing figure eights. Nobody's watching. Do what you feel you need for maybe 30 seconds or so. I can always instruct you in things to do, but you know your body's the best. So give it what it's asking for. See if you can fine tune your program here. 
Beautiful. Bring it all back to neutral. Let's go ahead and make our way down onto the ground, onto your backs. We'll do our pelvic clocks and tilts. You guys know this one too. You take an imaginary clock off the wall, put it down on the ground. Your sacrum is on the top of the clock there, in the center of it. So we need to cue into the sacrum. We're going to reference it a lot today. So let's go back and forth with the pelvis, tilt it back towards the ground. That's 12 o'clock, right? You can feel your back flattening to the earth. Do it the opposite way, tilt it towards six and feel the sacrum press the earth, the low back arches. I'm gonna tell you to keep pressing the sacrum as we go through the rest of the practice. So practice it here back and forth, 12 to six. If your legs are moving all over, maybe take your hands onto your thighs or put a block between the knees and just make it from the pelvis. Do your hula dance now up to 12 o'clock and around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Try to keep the legs out of it. Just find the pelvic movement. Do one, two, three more clockwise. And then back up to 12 and reverse it counterclockwise. Finding that movement of pelvis on fixed thighs. Beautiful. All right, let's warm our hamstrings up a bit in our back with some bridge. Arms at your side, middle fingers will touch the heels for most of us. If your arms are especially short, they will not touch. Turn your palms up. Lift your toes off the earth and then place them back down. Please don't grip the ground with the toes. Inhale. Exhale, push the bottom of the feet into the earth. Notice how the back muscles fire up. Pull the imaginary egg or elevator up into the pelvis and then tack down the fabric, the front of the belly and lift your hips off the ground. If everything is being pressed and held, we can only lift very slowly. See if you can open the fronts of the hips for a moment, starting to strengthen our glutes and our hamstrings. Take your hands underneath your back, interlace your fingers, and do your shimmy shoulders. Right blade comes under, left blade comes over. Shoot the knuckles towards the heels. Remember, try not to grip the ground with your toes. Friendly reminder again, the bridging now comes from the opening of your upper back, not more in your low back. Let's see if we can find that. Bend your elbows, arms at your side, fingers towards the heavens. Inhale. Exhale. Push the elbows down into the ground. Look down at your heart and look at how that thoracic spine can back bend. Keep the feet pressed. Keep the elevator up and the belly tacked down. Straighten your arms if possible. Touch the sky with the fingers. Shoulder blades press into the earth. Feel the stability. Watch that you're not pressing too hard into the back of the skull. If possible, take the arms up over the head on the exhale. Take them up. Take them way back behind. Touch the thumbs to the earth. Maybe the backs of the hands to the earth. And pause here for a moment. Go back through your checklist. All your pieces. Maybe squeeze an imaginary block between the knees and move the kneecaps towards the bottom of your mat. Feel the hamstrings and glutes starting to fatigue. Arms come back up on the inhale, on the exhale, elbows go down, arms go down, and let's slowly lower to the earth, one second for each vertebrae. When you get to the bottom of the rib cage, keep the low back arch imprint your sacrum, see how the back stays in its position, and take the soles of the feet together, Supta Konasana. that's beautiful. Let the legs move side to side for your pinwheel legs. And bring the pelvis back to neutral, take the hand, your hands to the outsides of your legs, move your knees back together and draw the knees up towards the chest. Take the right one up, take the left one up. Roll your low back off the floor, provided you don't have an active disc problem. 
Press the back of the skull into the ground and then release your sacrum back down. As the sacrum goes down, I hope you can feel the arch in your low back appear. We want that. Let's decompress the back a little. Inhale, exhale, push the sacrum down and then push the knees up into the hands. Isometric, that's a low back decompression. Release that press. Roll the low back off the floor again for a moment. Push the sacrum back down, low back will arch. Inhale, exhale, knees push up, hands pull down, and we decompress our backs. Good. Release the sacrum again. Take your hands behind your hamstrings now. Make a fist and just pound the hamstring flesh. Bring some blood and awareness to our hammies here before we start our stretch. Beautiful. Go ahead and put your feet back down again. Grab your straps. I'm going to need to give you a quick instruct because I think some people don't know this routine. It's a wonderful way to actively release our hamstrings. Actually, you know what, guys? Before we go there, come stand up for a moment. Let's do a little pretest and see where we're at today. Nothing fancy. Just do your forward fold. We've warmed up a little bit, obviously. See where you're at. Do the hammies already feel like, oh my goodness, they've already been nourished, or oh my goodness, I'm kind of tight. It's more just where are you starting? So when we're done, we'll do a post test. Nice. Come back to the floor, have a seat for a moment, and just watch. I'm going to go through this very quickly, but I'll guide you through it as we do it as well. So this is science, art and science meeting together. I'm going to take the strap around the bottom of my left foot. And what I'm going to do is inhale and on the exhale, I'm going to use the quad to straighten my knee, not the strap. My quadriceps straightens the knee, my hamstring relaxes, and then I do a little bit of a pull. So notice here, I'm not pulling and taking my low back off the ground. I want you to keep your sacrum pressed and it goes right into your hamstring. We'll do 10 like this, and then we'll turn the leg this way for external rotation and this way for internal rotation to get all the hamstrings. Okay, yogis, let's meet up here. On your backs, right knee bent, strap around the bottom of the left foot. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, pull your knee towards your chest. On the exhale, use your quad receptor, left quad to straighten your knee and then pull with the strap to stretch your hamstring. Keep your sacrum pressed down. Do 10 of those. Bend the knee, inhale, exhale, left quad straightens the knee, your hands pull to find the stretch and repeat eight more times. You guys can count out eight more. I'm gonna do it with you. Exhaling, quad contraction, hamstring stretch. So maybe you'll start to feel some heat generate. So byproduct of muscle contraction is heat. Heat is one of the most potent ways for us to release the tension from our tissues along with some tension. So here it is, both of them, heat and tension. Let's do one more. Pause for a moment. And then turn the left leg out. So the left knee goes out and the left heel will touch the right knee. Inhale. On the exhale, straighten the left leg. So the toes will go to the back corner, left corner, straighten with the quad, and then pull with the hands. So it just redirects the stretch to slightly different hamstring. Go ahead and do 10 of these. Hold your concentration, marry the movement with the breath, and you will reap the benefits here. These hammies will soften, and you'll find it easier to move into your forward folds without wrecking the low back. 10 of these, that's about six. And seven, give it a pull at the end. And eight. 
and nine and 10. Good, bring the leg back to neutral and then turn it the opposite way. So you're not torquing your knee, the whole leg turns into internal rotation. So the left knee is facing the right knee now. Bend the heel down towards the outside of the mat. Inhale, exhale, straighten the knee and the toes pull over the right shoulder. Give it a stretch. Maybe you'll feel even more on this one. This is that lateral hamstring that's often forgotten. Go ahead and do 10 of these. Marry the breath with the movement, get into the Zen of it, stay present, try to keep the sacrum pressed and you'll see, oh my goodness, it's that much more of a hamstring stretch. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. What do you think is going to happen next? Next leg. Switch over to the right. Put the strap on the bottom of the right foot. We'll do exactly the same thing we did. Start with a bent right knee. Inhale on your exhale. Use your quadricep to straighten the knee. Push the sacrum down and then pull with the strap. You don't pull so much that you get all janky here, but just enough that you feel the back of the hammy release. Repeat, inhale, exhale, quad, tightens, strap, pulls to stretch the hamstring. We're aware of the sacrum staying imprinted. That's two. Go ahead and do eight more on your own. Warming up these strings, bringing the awareness to the movements. When your hamstrings are tight, your pelvis is restricted, and those forward bends and it loads our discs. We want to move all the pieces separately. Uh, about two more. <clears throat> and 10. Turn the right leg now. The right heel will rest on the left knee. Inhale. On the exhale, push the sacrum down, straighten the leg. The toes go to the top of the right side of the mat, straighten and pull. Bend it, touch knee, inhale, exhale, straighten the leg, then use the strap to pull. More of a medial hamstring stretch here, the inside. Go ahead and do 10 of these now. So warming the tissues, the awareness, before we really get into the deep stretching. Two more. Good, bring the leg back to neutral. Let's bend the knee again. The heel will go to the outside of the mat. Watch that you're not torquing your knee, but you're just turning your hip and go ahead and do 10 of those. Remember to initiate with the quad first and then stretch with the strap. 10 of these beauties. More of the lateral hamstring, that biceps femoris. work the opposite muscle group and joint, well, mostly. So go ahead and turn over onto your bellies and let's stretch our quads now. Look up for a sec. I'm not crazy about the same leg because you tend to torque your body. So let's go ahead and bend the left knee and reach back with the right hand. You can keep yourself up on your elbow or flat and go ahead and stretch your heel back towards your glute. Hold it for a moment, and if possible, take the left thigh off the earth. There's a big old stretch of your quad and your hip flexor. Put the thigh back down, release the leg, switch the arm. The right arm is the weight bearing. Bend the right knee. Don't go all janky getting it, but reach back with your hands and see if you can pull your heel towards your butt. Maybe take the right thigh off the ground. 
Let's do one more. Release it, switch arms, bend left, grab it with the right, stretch your heel to your bottom, take the leg off the ground if possible. Release, switch arms right on the ground, grab the left, lift it, mm, yummy, and put it back down. Turn back over onto your back. Let's open up our hip flexors and work more of our hammies with our psoas block sequence. One of the most asked for sequences that I do. So you guys know this one. Take your block, have it ready, press your feet down into the earth, lift your hips. Take the block underneath your sacrum. The triangle bone is imprinted right onto that block. We use the block here to facilitate a stretch of the hip flexors, but also gives us a stretch or a addition for our hamstrings to make it a little bit easier. Okay. When the block is in the right place, it's comfy. When it's not, it's not comfortable. So as we go through this, be sure that you move the block to keep your comfort. Take your hands behind your right knee and draw your knee to your chest. Keep the sacrum somewhat imprinted on the edge of that block. We've already warmed our strings up, right? So maybe it feels easier already. Start to circle your ankle. Just crack out some of the noise from the ankle. Bring the ankle to rest and spread the toes. Draw the knee up a little bit closer to the chest. Feel how the right side of the pelvis is coming up into flexion while the left side is starting to release, hopefully. Let's go ahead and work the hamstrings here. Inhale. On your exhale, let the knee straighten out. You might have to release the hip down a little bit in order to get the knee to be straight, whatever that is for you. Go back and forth with that a few times. Draw the knee in on the inhale, stretching the top of the hamstring at the sit bone. And on the exhale, straighten the knee, pull the toes towards the face and feel the hamstring stretch by the knee. One more time, pull it in and then release it out. Let's pull it in again. Let the thigh rest on the ribs. If possible, take the sole of the right foot and stand it on the sky. So we're in this 90 degree position of the knee. If you can grab the outside border of your foot with your hand, easily do that. If not, just have your hands behind your thigh or put a strap over your foot. And then try to straighten out your left leg. That's the big old stretch. So as iliacus top of your quad left leg. Pause here, trying to get the sole of the right foot to the sky, the sole of the left foot to docinize to the bottom of your mat. And then take the left arm up over your head, feel for the back of the rib, reaching way back. Take a few breaths, and with every exhale, try to draw the right knee a little closer into the armpit. If your mind is wandering, bring it back to your task at hand here. Then take your left hand back to your side, bend the left knee, put it on the floor, put your right foot down, readjust the block as necessary, and go ahead and take left knee to chest. Draw it up. Circle the ankle clockwise, counterclockwise. Hands can come behind the knee if they're not already. Draw it up towards the chest. This is where we're going to release our hamstring again. Inhale. On the exhale, straighten your knee. Your hip might need to release a bit and pull the toes to the face. Three times, draw it in. Inhaling, exhale, release it. Toes come to face, back of the knee stretches. Last time, draw it in. Inhale, exhale, release, stretch it. Nice, draw it back in again. Readjust the block as necessary. Take the sole of the left foot, stand it on the sky. If you can grab the outside border of that left foot, awesome. If not, put a strap or just hold the back of the hamstrings. Straighten out your right leg. See if you can keep the sole of the left foot to the sky while that right leg tadasanizes. Yummy. Feeling that movement happening in our hips and our pelvis. Maybe take the right arm up overhead. Celebrate that. Reach way out. Bring the right hand back to your side. Slide the right foot back up, put the left foot back down. 
Let's go ahead and draw the knees to the chest. Now you'll balance on the edge of the block there, the sacrum. Take your hands to the bottom of the block for bridge arms. So maybe interlace your fingers around the bottom of the block, bring your shoulder blades underneath you. Push your sacrum down. You've got some inches here. So if your hammies are tight, go ahead and straighten out the legs. It gives you a few inches of added hamstring length. See if you can have your legs straight up to the sky. Dorsiflex and plantar flex your ankles, toes to sky, toes to earth. Bring the toes back towards your face. Inhale. On the exhale, push the sacrum down. Pull your belly in and let your legs come apart in a V. You might hear all kinds of snaps and cracks here. It's an unweighted position for your legs, so a wonderful way to release. Let them hang out there, pushing the heels to the opposite corners of the room, igniting the muscles, and then turn the toes towards the floor for external rotation. Nice, draw the legs back together. Again, touch the inside ankle bones on the inhale, and on the exhale, let them come apart, and maybe you'll feel the work you've done here. Turn the toes towards the floor, externally rotate the hips. Beautiful. Draw the legs back up again to candlestick legs. Pause here for a moment. Find your breath. Close your eyes and push your heels up towards the heavens. See if you can find that release. Beautiful. Put your right leg down. Put your left leg down. Bridge up off the block. Slide the block out of the way. And right into five weight belt stretch we go. We are so warmed up. Take your belt on the bottom of your right foot, straighten out your leg. I know that most of you know this, so let's see if we can get through this with some beautiful breath. Left leg is bent, sacrum pressed to the earth, towel off the bottom of your foot, run the strap from the ball of your foot to your heel, warming up the acupressure points in our body, bring the strap to rest on the ball of the foot, Science and art, pull the strap down, the right quadricep will contract, can you feel that? And when the right quad contracts, use the belt to stretch your hamstring. How about pushing your sacrum down? If you push your sacrum down, it accentuates that stretch. Pause here, keep that right leg nice and straight and straighten out your left leg, take it to the bottom of the mat. Tadasana left, Tadasana right. Right is up, left is down. Use the leverage here with your arms to convince those hamstrings to release. Pausing for a moment here. We'll open the leg out to the side in a moment for the inside hamstring stretch. Try not to change your hip position. What does that mean? Switch the strap to the right hand. Don't let the hip drop forward or to the bottom of the mat, but instead inhale and on the exhale, let that right leg out to the right side. The straps in the right hand, you might want to grab the strap also with the left hand, keep the left elbow down, and you can use that as some leverage. Look over at your right foot, turn the toes to the top of the mat so the inside ankle bone is to the sky, and then look at your foot and see it as it comes closer up towards the top of the mat. Your hammies have been prepped for this. The joints have been lubricated. See if you can really free up the space. Pause for a moment here. Inhale the right leg up to the sky. The strap will be in the left hand. Go ahead and take the leg only 45 degrees across your body line. The sacrum stays down. Pull the toes to the face. You can use the same cue. Push the ball of the foot into the strap and pull the strap down. On this side, take your right hand onto the top of your thigh and push that ball down out of the socket a bit and towards the earth. So we're changing the mechanics of our hip to a congruency of the ball in the socket and the hamstring will release. Oh, so beautiful. Take that leg back up, straight leg raise, and let's go ahead and roll it now. So bend your left leg, put your foot on the earth. Inhale. On the exhale, bridge up just enough to clear the pelvis, and then roll over onto your left side. Bring everything with you. Shoulder everything. If your head easily touches the earth, let it rest. If not, put a blanket underneath. Look at the ball or the 
right foot, the big toe, and slide the toe closer towards the top of your mat to stretch your hamstring, right? Strap in left hand. Underneath leg, crawl to the back of your mat now. So see if you can get your left quad to be parallel to the front of your mat. Bend the left knee. We stretched our quads a moment to go grab your shin if possible and roll your shoulder blades onto the earth. If you can't grab your foot or shin, no big deal. Just don't do it. If you'd like to micro adjust now that thoracic spine, bend the left elbow, push it into the earth, roll your heart towards the sky, and then turn your gaze over your right shoulder. Let's pause here for a moment, see if you can stretch the right hammy a bit more, stretch the left quad a little bit more, and then roll the rib cage a little bit more. If you're holding your underneath leg, release it. Roll back onto your back. Split the reins of the horse again and do three long breath counts. With every exhale, use the strap to stretch those strings a bit more. When your hamstrings are free, your back is unloaded. And the left knee and the right knee, take the strap off. Put it down next to the left side of your mat for a moment and straighten out both legs. Maybe you can feel a Difference between the right and the left. Let's see if we can match that loose, yummy, right-sided release on the left. So repete, let's do the left side. Bend your knees. Take a strap around the bottom of your left foot and straighten the left leg. Wherever your hip has to be for a straight leg, take the strap, towel off the bottom of the foot. Feel that heat generated accessing those acupressure points, run it a few times, back and forth. Come to rest now, the straps on the ball of the foot. Push the foot up into the strap, pull the foot, toes towards the face, engage the quad and stretch the hamstring. Your hands can be off the earth or elbows down for a little bit more of a hinge effect here. Pausing for a moment, finding the length to those hamstrings and then straighten your right leg to docinize right and left. Give the sacrum a little bit of a push towards the earth. Try to keep that left knee as straight as possible. Let's switch the strap back to the left hand, inhale. On the exhale, remember the hip doesn't change position. We just lower the leg out to the left. Most of us, the leg will not touch the ground. Maybe two hands here, left hand holds the strap, right elbow on the ground. You can find you have some really good leverage here. Look at the toes of your left foot, roll them to the back of the mat, and then use the strap to open up those hamstrings. Sacrum stays down, right butt cheek down. It's not trying to stretch all the way over and taking our pelvis off the earth, but maintaining this alignment. Beautiful, guys. Inhale the left leg back to straight leg raised position. Switch the strap to the right hand and let the right leg go cross town 45 degrees. Maybe left hand L shape, top of left thigh, push it down. Mobilize the hip put it in its favorite position and then your hamstring will say, I can soften now. Straight leg raise left. Bend the right knee, bridge up a tiny bit, bridge up enough to roll over onto your right side. Left foot is on the earth, big toe touches the ground, strap in the right hand. Underneath leg, crawl up to the back of the mat, Rest your head on a prop if it doesn't comfortably touch the earth. You'll bend that underneath leg. Like I said, we stretch the quad. See if you can get your heel under your bun. And then use that pole to roll yourself onto your rib cage, shoulder blades. 
Use the micro adjust of the right elbow, pushing in the earth for rolling. Find all your pieces, left handy stretch, right quad stretch, rib cage thoracic spine opener. If you're holding your underneath leg, release it, roll back onto your back. We'll do our three second, or sorry, three breath stretch of the left hamstring with the right leg straight. Go ahead and find that opening, realizing where you are now versus when we first started. Don't hold the breath, marry the breath with the movement with every one of your beautiful exhales, long, slow, deep exhalation, release your hamstring. Bend the right knee, bend the left knee, put your foot down. Straighten both legs, maybe a little more balanced. Let's go ahead and take this to a standing position. Bend your knees, roll onto your right side, come up. Go ahead and do your midway post test. Feel what that feels like in your forward fold. Amazing what we can do for our bodies, right? Okay, let's do museum back to get ourselves down there. Take your feet hip distance apart. Tadasana legs, bend your knees. So our hamstrings are not quite so influential. Take your hands onto the tops of your thighs and internally rotate your thighs. Anytime you forward bend, we want internal rotation. Take your hands onto your thighs now, tops of the thighs. Inhale. On the exhale, push your hands down towards your thighs, but put your, push your thighs up into your hands. Do you feel how your back starts to find its position here? We move into the forward fold. Release that. We'll do it one more time. Inhale. On the exhale, push your hands down, push your legs up. The muscles will contract to anteriorly tilt that pelvis. And then go ahead and put your belly chest down on your thighs. However, Far you need to bend your knees as long as it doesn't irritate the sit bones. Let that relief, let the crown of the head go to the ground, and then put your hands on the floor. So this is what it feels like to forward bend when our hamstrings are not quite so influential. Keep the crown of the head towards the earth, and then see if you can push the right foot into the earth and straighten out the left knee without changing the pelvis so much. Bend the right, inhale, and straighten the left. Go back and forth. You can be on your fingertips. You can have blocks. Whatever feels right for you, try not to shift the pelvis, but just straightening and bending the knees. Do it maybe three, four times to each side. We've warmed our strings up, yogis. Hopefully we can feel the benefits of this as we go into our forward fold in a moment. Good, bend the knees, put the thumbs into the hip creases and push yourself back up, tall stand position. Grab your block, we'll do our Pez dispensers. Take the block up into the top of the groin, stand in Tadasana, you guys know Tadasana, feet press into the earth, we find that grounding. The block will help you to find the musculature, let's do quarter, half, three quarter full movements. Hands on the pelvis, we'll back bend first, inhale. On your exhale, push your feet into the earth, squeeze the block between your thighs, start to push it forward like that Pez candy dispenser, tilt the pelvis back posteriorly, and just in your low back, feel that arch. Pull the elbows in. Inhale back to center. Exhale, squeeze the block, send it back behind you, anteriorly tilt the pelvis, internally spiral the hips, flex the hips, and come down just a quarter of the range. So just in your low back, maybe less of a pull on those hamstrings as we've already worked them. Inhale yourself back up and on the exhale, squeeze the block, push it forward, find your Tadasana legs, go into your low back and then maybe to the bottom of your rib cage, start the back bend. Inhale back forward, exhale, tilt the pelvis, internally spiral the hips, flex the hips and come down to your Arch low back, flat or upper back position. Tug on those strings a little bit. Inhale back up. Exhale, squeeze the block, push it forward. Back bend. 
up into mid thoracic this time, shine your heart towards the sky, open up. Mm. Inhale forward, exhale, squeeze the block, send it back behind you. Flexion, internal rotation, hips arching the back, anteriorly tilting the pelvis, and come on down a little bit more. See if you can find the flexion in your hips and the release of your hamstrings as the crown goes towards the earth. Inhale back up, squeeze the block, push it forward, posteriorly tilt. We've stretched our hip flexors over the top. Bring your elbows close and bring it way up into your upper back and then let your head release back for your final movement. Inhale back to center. Exhale, squeeze the block. Go through all those key points. Find the elegance in the movement. We don't round our spines if possible. It's from the looseness of the hamstrings now or the compliance. Release the hands to the shins, to the feet, to the earth, to some blocks. Hang down here in your forward fold for a moment. You can shake your head yes and no, get some of the tension out of the neck. And bring yourself back up again, maybe thumbs into hip creases, and up you go. Okay, let's face the front of our mats. Put the block down the top of the mat on the right side. Take your foot up so that your toes are just in front of the block and take your left leg back behind you. You can have your left foot angled out a little bit or straight forward, whatever feels better for you, and find your Tadasana legs. We've got strong poles that we're standing on. So again, another forward fold here, but the legs are staggered. Inhale. Exhale, push your feet into the earth, find that beautiful stability. Start to tilt the pelvis as you come forward over that very released hamstring. Crown of the head towards the front of the mat, and then take your right hand down onto the block for some stability. See if you can keep your pelvis square here so that the sit bones are to the back of the mat. Take the left hand onto the sacrum. Push your hand into your sacrum, find that stability and can you with your feet pressed lengthen the crown of your head at the front of the mat. So find the tug probably on that right hamstring and right through your spine. Good. Take the left hand front of the left hip crease and bring yourself back up with your strong legs. You might stop there. If you feel like you'd like to do a little rotation, let's give it a shot. Inhale. Exhale, feet press, tilt the pelvis. Arch the back, come forward from the length of your hamstring. Same thing we just did, put your right hand back down onto the block. Left hand onto the sacrum, lengthen out. So let's see if we can switch hands now. You've got to have stable legs and a core. So switch your hands. Take your left hand onto the block and your right hand onto the sacrum. Yeah. Lengthen the crown of the head to the front of the mat. Tug on that right hamstring as you move the sit bone towards the bottom of the mat, and maybe rotate the heart around if you have the balance for it through your rib cage. Maybe you'll take your right hand up for your forward bend with your twist. That's beautiful. Release the hand back to the sacrum, lengthen out the spine, switch the hands right to the block, left to the sacrum, level the pelvis, feel how we've really worked those hamstrings and pull yourself back up. Step forward with your left foot, bend your knees, take the block to the other side, left corner, your toes to your left foot are just behind the block, and then take the right leg back. Have the foot angled out if you'd like to, or have them straight. Lift and fan the toes, press the feet into the earth, inhale, on the exhale, tilt the pelvis, flex the hips, internally spiral those femurs, draw the crown of the head forward, put the left hand down onto the block, you'll find the stability with that, and the right hand on your sacrum. Crown of the head towards the front of the mat, spin that left sit bone back, tug on the hammy a bit, pause for a moment. Now let's come out of that, inhale yourself back up, tall position. Go right back into that, stay there, or come along for the twist. Find your stable legs, inhale, exhale, tilt the pelvis, 
Draw that body forward. Left hand will release down first. Right hand on the sacrum. Switch to hands if possible. Right hand will go onto the block. Left hand onto the sacrum. Feel as you push the left hand into the sacrum how you can spin the sit bones to the back of the room. Keep the feet pressed, the hands pressed, and see if you can rotate a little. Inhale, exhale, rotate that rib cage around and see if maybe you can look towards your left. If you feel like you're wobbly, push the feet into the earth and pull up your core. Maybe take the left hand up, don't overdo it. Do the best you can here, trying to find your limits. Let's come out of it slowly, left hand onto the sacrum. Switch your hands back, left and right. And then pull yourself back up. Oh, beautiful. Come stand in your Tadasana for a moment. Tilt the pelvis. Bring yourself down. What do those hamstrings feel like now? Yummy. Release for a moment. Bend the knees. Put the thumbs into the hip creases. And pull yourself back up again. Okay, I'd love to introduce you to a new little series I've been working on here. We've really prepped ourselves. This will be the icing on the cake. Okay, guys, get your straps. And go ahead and make a big loop. So if you got one of these metal buckle things, just send it through. If you got a regular old buckle, just clip it. And you want to have a bunch of room here. Take it over your back and it's going to come under your armpits. So you want to be sure that the tail end, you can grab that tail end either right or left. Slide the strap up so it's in your armpits and then just put your body down on the ground. So it wants to be as high as possible into your armpits. Good. Go ahead now, and take your left leg and put it on the strap and then straighten out your legs. So you just have to adjust the strap now so that it stays under your armpits and you can have a straight left leg. So already, hopefully you can feel some of the beauty of this. We're working two of the things that are most limited on our bodies, our hamstrings and our mid thoracic spine. So try to keep the left leg straight and then push the left foot up into the strap and feel how that opens that thoracic spine of yours. Let's just pause here for a moment. You've got a beautiful hamstring stretch going, thoracic spine opening, and don't really need to do very much work at all here. So hang out for a moment, close your eyes, find your breath, and maybe you can already tighten that strap up a little bit as you start to get used to this. So I'm gonna take you through a whole sequence here, trying to stretch our hamstrings more and also mobilize our joint, our hips, right? Okay. Inhale, and on your exhale, see if you can take that leg a little bit higher and tighten up the strap. Beautiful. Take your hands now behind the strap. So your hands will be towards the bottom of your mat and you can have your elbows on the ground. Beautiful. Bend your left knee slightly, inhale. And on the exhale, straighten your knee and use your hands on that strap to straighten the leg a little bit more. Now here's the real kicker, push your sacrum to the earth. Can you guys feel that? As your sacrum goes to the earth, the tug on the hamstring becomes even more. Let's do that a few times. Keep the sacrum pressed, bend the left knee slightly, inhale. And on the exhale, use your hands to help to straighten out that leg and maybe a little bit more of a stretch. One more time. Bend it and straighten it. Push the foot towards the sky. Keep that thoracic spine nice and extended. I recommend you keep your hands on the strap as you straighten out your right leg. So it's very similar to our hamstring stretch we did a moment ago, except we don't have to use our hands quite so much. You can release the hands now. If the strap starts to slide, tighten it up a little bit. And sometimes if you have a very slippery shirt on, it will slide. Okay, let's go ahead and do some micro movements now. Keep the right leg pressed, inhale. And on the exhale, take that left leg out to the left side a little bit. We did it a moment ago with the 
both the hands. Feel as you keep the leg pressed into the strap. Oh my goodness, the stretch of that hamstring is amazing. Bring it back to center on the inhale. On the exhale, take it across town a little bit, just across the body. So again, stretching that lateral hamstring. Back to center on the inhale and on the exhale, out to the left, mobilizing our rib cage and stretching our strength. Inhale back to center and to the right. Bring it back to center. You might need to tighten up your strap now. Okay, let's mobilize the hip. Maybe take your hands back to the strap for stability. Inhale and on the exhale, turn the toes of the left foot out towards the left. Can you feel that stretch way up at the top of your hamstring and it's mobilizing your hip socket? Ah, awesome. Inhale back to center and then turn the toes towards the midline for internal rotation. Do that a few times. External rotation, internal rotation. Bring it back to neutral. You know how we do our stretch of, or our release or the flossing is the word I'm looking for of our nerves and our upper body. Here's one for your, your sciatic nerve. Look up at your foot and pull your toes towards your face. Inhale, and on the exhale, pick your head up off the ground and try to touch your nose to your knee. You gotta feel a little bit of tingling down the back of your leg. If it's more than tingling, back off. Let your head back down to the earth, put it down. Dorsiflex the ankle a little bit more if possible. Inhale, and on your exhale, pick your head up off the ground and floss the nerve. Release your head back down to the earth. Tighten up the strap for a moment. Close your eyes. Push the foot up. Feel the extension through that thoracic spine. Bend the left knee, oh my goodness. Take the right foot, put it up into the strap, and take the left foot down onto the earth. Can you feel all that work in your left hammy? Be sure the strap is up by your armpits again, keep it safe up there. Push the right foot up into the strap, extend through that thoracic spine, find that opening. Put your hands up onto the strap. Let's do the same sequence. Bend the right knee slightly on the inhale and on the exhale, straighten the leg and use the strap to help to release. Push your sacrum down. Feel what I'm feeling. As that sacrum is imprinted, the hamstring gets all the love. Bend the knee on the inhale. On the exhale, straighten the knee. Use the strap. A little bit of a open. Last time, bend the knee, straighten out the leg, find that opening. Push the foot up into the strap, find that extension through the spine, and straighten out your left leg to docinize left. Hands on the strap, you can straighten the leg a little bit more maybe, maybe tighten up the strap a little bit if that's part of your ability there. Keep the strap on the ball of the foot. It's uncomfortable, it's on the arch. Press the sacrum towards the ground and let that right leg out to the right a little bit. Just a little bit of movement to really accentuate the stretch of the proximal attachment of your string on your sit bone. Come across the midline. So technically mobilizing the joint as well as accentuating the stretch. Go back and forth with that maybe three times. A little bit of ab and adduction. Tugging on our attachment point. Beautiful. Bring it back to neutral and then work the joint. Turn the toes out to the side for external rotation. You'll stretch the upper pieces of the string too. Bring it back to center and then internally rotate. Feel the ball moving in the socket. Yeah, three times with that, internal and external rotation. Bring it back to neutral. Take your hands up on the strap, inhale. On the exhale, pull down, look at your foot, your dorsiflexing. Lift your head off the ground, try to touch your knee with your nose. 
put your head back down on the ground on the inhale on the exhale imprint your sacrum lift the head touch the nose towards the knee put it back down hang out for three breaths now in this luxuriating hamstring stretch and thoracic spine opener strap off the bottom of your foot and up over your head. Don't anybody get tangled up, please. Roll onto your right side. Come through, sit. Come back to stand. I did this routine the other day when I came up with it and felt my hamstrings so different after. Let's give it a shot, guys. Inhale on your exhale. Go through your motions here and see what it feels like. Oh my goodness. I hope you can feel some freedom in the strings and up into your back. So lovely. Take your feet wide. Do your yogic squat. You can have your toes turn out a little bit or have your heels come up if need be. Put a blanket underneath the heels if necessary. Elbows inside the knees, thumbs onto the heart. Drop the perineum towards the earth. Inhale. On your exhale, squeeze your knees in and push your elbows out. Do it very slowly, ramp it on and ramp it off. And hopefully you can feel the same here, this decompression of your low back. We have taken care of our backs and hammies today in such a beautiful way. Let's have a seat, go into your twist. Sit up on your blanket if you need to. Right foot on the ground, hands on the earth, big open heart. Arms come up, inhale. On the exhale, open twist to your left, just your ribs, turning them. The ribs turn, the thoracic spine turns. Maybe your right elbow goes over that right knee and your left elbow goes towards the back of your mat. Inhale back through center. On the exhale, right hand turn, turn the ribs, elbows. Inhale back through center, exhale, left hand turn. Notice how the muscles have been alerted. Release the arms now and use the arms to help to bolster up the system and find your twist. Inhale back through center, exhale right. Release the arms, use that as your Extra benefits. Inhale back through center. Release the hands back. Try to make this as elegant as possible as you switch your legs around to the other side. Fist press the earth, sit bones down. Hands on the knee, big open heart. Arms up, inhale. Exhale, open twist right. Just the ribs first, turn them. Inhale back through center, exhale left. Inhale back through center, exhale right. Release the arms, use those to accentuate your twist. Inhale back through center, release the arms. Inhale back through center. Go ahead and find yourself on your back now. Straighten out your legs, straighten out your arms. Take your arms up over your head, reach to the very top of your mat. Right hand around left wrist, lengthen side body. Left around right, lengthen side body. Let your hands rest for a moment above your head if it's comfortable. Realize this position of your rib cage is so advantageous for finding the deepest breath. Fill your lungs up to the sides of your rib cage as you inhale. Hold the breath for a second at the end of that voluminous inhale 
and then let it out nice and easy. The lungs will recoil and then use your abs to push out the rest of the sludge. One more time, fill it up. Hold the breath, let it out. Take your arms to your side, grab the side of your mat with your fist, inhale. On the exhale, push your hands down towards your feet, your body will slide up the mat an inch or so, right into Shavasana you go, maybe pull your blades underneath you, have your palms turned towards the sky. If you've got a handy eye bag or shirt, cover your eyes with it. And let yourself start to release into Shavasana. Touch the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth behind your teeth. It's a still calming point. Trace your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Stimulate all the relaxation spots. And then allow your tongue to release to the bottom of your mouth. Your lips will part slightly. It's a soft, vacuous mouth. That softness is translated back to your brain. Your brain knows you're in relaxation and moving into a splendid, calm state. Homeostasis, even balance. The scales are balanced. There's no tongue and no teeth, no gripping, no grinding. Perhaps you're starting to lose the sense of where your body is and space begins. Take yourself out to one of your favorite spots in the world. Perhaps you're in that spot right now. And luxuriate for a minute or two. Letting yourself be devoid of thought. Finding that lucid sleep. feel the magic of our practice, what it does for our mind and our bodies, shifts our focus, deepens our breath, lengthens our muscles, lubricates our joints. We find grace and ease in our movements, becoming unencumbered and So much less bound up, irrigated, softened. Find the marble on the back of your skull. It's the center point of the skull. Let your head rock side to side so slowly. Maybe begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, bringing your physical bodies back to the space. When you're ready, bend your knees, slide your heels towards your buttocks, glue your knees and ankles together. Roll over onto your right side. Pause there, away from the heart. This transition position often brings up thoughts of kindness, of generosity, of altruism, and seva, selfless 
service, compassion, empathy. We always remind ourselves here, Aloka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. May the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. Inhale and on your exhale, draw yourself back up to the seated place. Let's try a forward bend before we close just to get a sense of what's going on. You can put your hands back onto your thighs if you'd like to, or maybe just to arch the back and start to walk forward. And see what that feels like. So I feel like the pieces are maybe moving in a more coordinated fashion, maybe a little less encumbered. Slide the hands back up again. Press your fingers into the earth. Find that grounding sit bones, fingers, energetic prongs. Crown of the head lifting towards the heavens. Find that energy too that lies right in front of your spine. And as you inhale, it inflates. And as you exhale, it deflates. Draw the energy up from the earth to your heart center. Thumbs to heart. The heart will rise. We pause here for a moment, reminding ourselves to be so grateful for all we have. Inhale. On your exhale, let your hands float forward. Fingertips touch, fingernails touch, hands open like a lotus. Draw the sweetness back into your heart center, backs of the hands, roll thumbs to heart. Take your thumbs to your third eye. Still contemplation point, all seeing eye, ESP, eye, clarity spot. Let's bow to each other. Namaste. Thank you, yogis. So wonderful to practice with you. I hope that you enjoyed the new sequence today for our hamstrings. Always trying to think of new things to do to improve upon our practice. I will be practicing Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7.30 in the morning, California time with Yoga Tree. And back here again, of course, look forward to it every Sunday from 11 to 12.30. I wish you a beautiful week and I'll hang out again so I can see your faces and have a quick chat if you'd like to stick around. Thanks so much.